You're watching a classic episode of Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World Television. Outdoor World Pro Edwin Evers is one of the young guns on the professional bass circuit. With four appearances in the Bassmasters Classic and lots of success on the tour. But when Edwin goes fishing for fun, you're likely to find him hanging around the docks at Lake Texoma, an 89,000 acre impoundment that takes its name from its location on the Texas Oklahoma border, where the post spawn pattern is made to order for his favorite tactics. Oh, all right. Well, we're here on Lake Texoma and we're fishing a post-spawn pattern. You can see that fish right there is all spawned out. That's a Kentucky. Fishing a post-spawn pattern here on Lake Texoma, and, and what these fish are doing, they're up here feeding on these shad, suspended them in 30-something foot of water right here. They're suspended underneath these docks, feeding on those shad that are feeding on those algae that's all around that styrofoam right there. And What I do is I just I throw my jig or my spinnerbait. Now, I'm going to catch some here on a spinnerbait, I hope, today. I'm going to throw my jig or spinnerbait back up in that stall, and I'm just going to swim it out. I'm, I got it maybe a foot, two foot underneath the water, and I'm just swimming it right out. And I'm imitating a shad coming out, and those bass just come out from underneath that styrofoam and just annihilate it. The bass strain Edwin is catching, locally called Kentucky bass, is known to biologists as Micropterus punctilatus, the spotted bass. The species is closer to a small mouth than a large mouth but can live in warmer water than smallmouths. It earns its name from the dark blotches down the lateral line. How can you tell a spot from a largemouth? On spotted bass, the jaw never extends past the eye, while the largemouth's jaw goes well beyond. The IGFA record for spotted bass is 10 pounds, 4 ounces, and any fish approaching 5 pounds is a whopper. Oh, yeah. Right in the same place I caught that last one. That one ate my spinnerbait. Not a real big one, just another nice chunky fish right on the trailer hook. Now that's a great reason to be throwing a trailer hook right there. You can see I would not have caught that fish if it not been for that trailer hook. Nice fish trying to feed on those shad that are up there spawning on that foam. Caught that one on that spinnerbait that time. I was kind of jerking it out of there trying to imitate those shad, and he just came out and grabbed it. I go back in there and try to catch me another one. There's one right there. Oh, what do I got here? Oh, there we go. That's a little bit better fish. Right on the end of that dock. Man, he is pulling hard. Another Kentucky. I know there's some largemouth in here somewhere. Getting a little bit bigger though. Now, he ate it pretty good. He got it right there in the side of the mouth. Ate that spinnerbait good. Another fat Kentucky. That's a good one. Ate it right there on the corner of that dock. I seen him come out from underneath that styrofoam and just ate my spinnerbait. Bent it all up. If you catch fish like that a lot of times, you want that wire and that hook all to be in line right there. This right here with in line at the tip and the back of that hook, you want all that to be in line. If, if you don't, it'll cause your bait to, to ride over the side or it can do cartwheels on you. you always make sure you, you get them all straight when you get done. Just kind of look at them like that right there and you, it's a little run right. Man, that's fun. That makes me just want to catch another one and another one and another one. I like doing that. Oh, there's one. Golly, come on. Golly. <laughs> it's really important when you're doing this to make an accurate cast. You can see right there, that fish came right out from under that styrofoam, and I'd made a, a, a really good cast within inches of that styrofoam. So it's important to have a really good rod that you're comfortable with. You can make a really accurate cast. Um, I like a medium action to medium heavy with some pretty good tips where I can really fling that thing underhand up in those tight spots because you're not going to get as many bites you know if you're off a foot to the left or a foot to the right you're going to be up on on the dock so you need to make really good casts it's really important when you're doing this you know because those fish are holding tight right underneath that foam and it's a reaction bite when that spinnerbait or that jig comes by you know they're just kind of sitting there 
still sleeping and, and that spinnerbait comes by and wham, they're going to hit it. So it's important to have it really close to that foam to, to get the optimum amount of bites. Edwards Rod is a seven foot Bass Pro Shops Pro Qualifier attached to a Pro Qualifier high speed reel. He's fishing 17 pound XPS fluorocarbon line. His lures include XPS tungsten spinner baits, XPS tinder tubes, and XPS jigs. Edwin Evers is working marina docks on Lake Texoma, and on this lake, there's endless dock habitat. The giant impoundment boasts 11 marinas. Edwin's boat, a Nitro 929 SC, is a good one for handling the broad expanses of Texoma. And the Motor Guy 24 volt trolling motor mounted up front makes it easy for him to put the boat just where it needs to be for effective casting. Something really important to remember when you're fishing docks like this is boat positioning. You want to be in a position where you're close enough to make a good good presentation yet far enough away to where you don't spook those fish and it's also important to, to keep your boat in a position where you can have that bait in the strike zone for the, the entire length of that cast. That's really important also. To, you know, if you get too far one way or too far the other way, you know, your bait's going to be away from the foam as the boat's going by or it's going to, you know, be up you know, underneath it, and you know, you'll be out of position to set the hook, so it's really important to have good boat position when you're doing this. As the day warms up, the shad drop away from the covered docks and the pattern slows down. Edwin decides to try a different approach. Since the sun's came out, I am going to switch to a Bass Pro Shop's flipping tube, and I'm going to try to work that right down the sides of those docks. I'm going to put a lead head up in there, and I'm going to jerk it and it's going to give it a real erratic action and a lot of times this really works um, when the bite gets kind of tough. You know the fish today have been coming out and nipping at my spinner bait and my, and my jig so I'm going to go to a tube and I'm going to give it a little more erratic action, a little smaller profile bait and we'll see if that's going to work. Oh there's a good one. Man he clobbered that. I mean clobbered. Now the sun's come out and I've switched to a tube, something that I can work a little slower get in there real tight um, man, that's a good fish right there that's a, look at that shad he spit out right there don't tell me he's not eating shad come here buddy oh man that's a big old fat fish right there now I switched to a tube and I rigged it with a, a lead head in there and I'm jerking that thing down the sides of those docks that's a nice fish right there I'll let him go back thank you Man, that was fun. I saw that fish come all the way out. I was jerking that tube down through there, and it hopped. That tube kind of hopped up towards the top of the water, and it drove that fish nuts, I guess, because man, he just came out and just crushed it. I want to catch another one. That got me excited now. I think I might have figured out what it's going to take to make these fish bite with the sun out. Oh, I got one on, and I got my line around the top of the dock. That fish came up as I was trying to lift my line around that bolt right there. It's going to be a miracle if I get this fish in. Oh, there he is. Oh, nice one, too. Let me tell you. <laughs> Man, I barely got him hooked. He came all the way to the top of the water and tried to eat that. There's a good one right there. Man, look at that fish. Look at the black spot on him right there. Came up and ate that Bass Pro flipping tube right there. This fish turns out to be a largemouth and a good one. Man, that's a great one to end the day on. What a day of fishing. That has to make you want to go out there and try this, guys. Go out there and, and find you some docks and, and this post-spawn pattern fishing beneath those docks. It's a great way to catch some fish. For more information on fishing Lake Texoma, visit them on the web at laketexoma.com. <laughs>